Good morning from me as well, everyone. My name is uh, Shaminda uh, Pereira, and I am coming to you from Mississauga, the unceded and traditional lands of the Mississaugas of the uh, of the Credit First Nations. I am eternally grateful to be able to live, work, and play on these lands. So today, you can see the title slide says "Strength in Volunteerism and Action Steps for Volunteer Recruitment and Retention." But I will take you through the volunteer engagement cycle to give you a holistic view. Uh, please allow me to introduce uh, my organization a little bit. So who we are, we are Volunteer Canada. Our vision is to harness our individual contributions and collectively build a volunteerism movement across Canada. Uh, our mission is to advance the volunteerism movement to grow connection, community and belonging. So uh, we are a little bit going back to our roots of why Volunteer Canada was started. It's to bring the entire country together in volunteerism. And we've been doing this since 1977. Uh, some of you may know us and some of you may not know us. So please do share who we are with your peers and encourage them to visit our, our website, which is volunteer.ca. My objectives of today are simple. It's two a very clear cut objectives. One is to identify the current state of volunteerism, and the other is to identify some action steps for volunteer recruitment and retention, which you can apply uh, you know, immediately when you go back to your desks. Um, I would like to start by highlighting a few data points, uh, which paints a picture of where volunteerism in Canada is at today. Uh, findings in the 2018 General Social Survey on Giving, Volunteering and Participating, in short, the GSSGVP, reported that over 24 million in Canada volunteered for a pro-social activity. Uh, that is 8 in 10 people in Canada. Uh, it also showed that 41% volunteered for a not-for-profit organization or group. We call this formal volunteering. Uh, this is a drop from the 2013 survey, which was 44%. 74% volunteered with activities and initiatives that are not organized by an organization or a group. We call this informal volunteering. This is also a drop from the 2013 survey, which was 82%. So the decline in numbers was creeping in anyway, whether we face the pandemic or not. To go a little deeper into the data by age group, the 2018 survey found that from those who volunteered for an organization, youth aged 15 to 24 was the largest group, seniors aged 75 years and older was the smallest group, but with the largest portion of hours per person. All these statistics I mentioned were before the pandemic. But you can see that during the pandemic, there are certain um, impacts that the pandemic brought forward with the volunteerism space. And these two groups, youth and seniors, the was a, a large, um, the drop in those numbers was, was a large impact when it comes to the volunteerism at organizations. Um, now let's see what the pandemic did to volunteerism and the not-for-profit sector as a whole. Uh, it further contributed to the drop in numbers by a deep dive. Uh, in all the reports that were published during the past three years, there are recurring themes. They, they may report different ratios and statistics based on their, uh, you know, whatever their data gathering tool or survey is, but the themes are very similar. So what are they? Um, there was an increase in demand for services the not when inflation uh, and uh, you know for demand for services like uh, meals meals uh, meals on wheels and uh, in in home volunteering services the increase in demand for services was uh, creeping in but the organizations were having uh, shortages of volunteers to actually deliver these services then there was a struggle to retain volunteers and all of these three together, we generally term it as a volunteer crisis. The crisis is slowing down a little bit, but we are still not out of the woods to say that we are out of the crisis. And our organizations also struggle to retain volunteers in long-term roles. Then through our informal conversations and formal conversations uh, and the feedback that we hear from our community, there are recurring uh, conversations that keep coming up. Uh, volunteers want to know that organizations are ready for engagement. 
what I mean by this is that the volunteers want to know are there health and safety protocols to uh, you know build the confidence in them that they can come into the organization and volunteer with no um, fear of you know health conditions and also the fact that uh, you know whether the organizations are flexible to uh, meet the circumstances that they may be facing the well who declared the pandemic we are out of the pandemic but there is an aftermath from the pandemic so these volunteers want to know uh, you know with the challenges we are having on a personal level uh, time considerations time challenges and uh, you know financial implications from the pandemic is the organization flexible in meeting these circumstances when they are engaging us in volunteer roles then there is also preferences that are uh, being brought forward to remote volunteering, virtual volunteering, and episodic volunteering. Episodic means a one-time uh, engagement, so they are in and they're out. It can be a project or it can be an initiative or even an event, but it's a one-time engagement. And micro uh, volunteering, which is a short-time commitment. When we mean micro, we're talking about one to two hours maximum. So these four uh, formats of volunteering, the feedback is that uh, the volunteers, because of their socioeconomic conditions, they prefer flexibility and they have preference to these formats. It's not to say that there's nobody out there for long-term commitments. There are, but the high preference is to these four formats. Then organizations are based on these insights, they are re-looking at, you know, these are redesigning their roles because the pandemic another uh, another situation that it brought forward in the not-for-profit world is that it gave an opportunity i should present it that way it gave an opportunity for organizations to really look at their existing volunteer engagement strategies and to revise and enhance if it needs to be revised and enhanced and because of some of the uh, you know world events that are taking place and some of the situations that we hear in the news, uh, inclusion and social justice are also a focus in the volunteerism space, uh, especially when it comes to the younger crowd. Uh, whether you're talking about activism or volunteerism, if you really look at their definitions, they're almost the same. In other words, you are contributing your time, effort, and skill for a particular uh, cause. Uh, in terms of uh, volunteerism, it's a cause in addressing social issues and social services. When you talk about activism, activism it is about uh, you know advocating for a, a cause that you believe in. So young, the younger people find both as a form of uh, participation in the community. <clears throat> so, how did Volunteer Canada respond to this? Um, in response to these changing tides, and as a matter of fact, the changing tides across the globe, Volunteer Canada, we embarked on spearheading a national volunteer action strategy. The last national volunteer strategy was in 1967. So we're looking at reinvigorating an almost 57-year-old model of volunteerism in Canada. Uh, well, at present, we are in the phase of developing a roadmap for the national strategy. Uh, so far, we have had community consultations, literature reviews, and a scan of volunteering frameworks beyond our borders. Uh, through the National Volunteer Action Strategy, we hope to unite Canada in adapting to the changes in volunteering and bringing in new ways to measure it. Well, this is where I will leave you with regards to the National Volunteer Action Strategy. If you would like to learn more or get involved, uh, please do so by visiting volunteerstrategy.ca. You can see the uh, web address to the top left hand side of the screen as well. Now to the main feature of my presentation, what does this all mean when we look at addressing the volunteer needs of your departments or divisions? Uh, in the next few minutes, I'm going to share a few ideas that you can immediately uh, implement or start conversations on. Uh, I understand that volunteer engagement to you means Volunteers of direct response services and volunteers who are engaged in non-response services such as community outreach. Please let me know if it is otherwise and if I'm using the wrong terminology, I will be quick to correct that. Uh, my presentation focuses on volunteer recruitment and retention related to non-response services. 
Let's take a time check over here. So I would like, I am unable to see the chat right now, but I will look at the chat during the, uh, you know, a question and answer session. But if you could type into the chat, uh, reflecting on uh, these two questions, you can answer both or you can answer one. Where do you currently recruit your volunteers from? What is your current volunteer retention strategy? I'll give you about 30 seconds to type in. Okay, so while you do that, let's move on. To help us with the steps you can take, I'm going to use this simplified version of the volunteer engagement cycle uh, with the stages titled Plan, Engage, Support, Recognize, and Evaluate at each stage. Uh, I like to start by saying that volunteer engagement is not a program. I hear over and over again. Uh, many uh, professionals, uh, even from the sector, referring to volunteer engagement as a program. It is not a program. It is an operational function, just as you would see the human resources function. So volunteer engagement then needs an organizational strategy. When we look at the declining numbers of volunteers, we also have to be careful of how we look at those numbers. Uh, for example, Lack of consistent flow of volunteers will not always mean that there are no volunteers out there. It could mean that volunteers are looking for different ways of participating, uh, such as, as I mentioned before, virtual, remote, episodic, and micro-volunteering opportunities. Or the fact that volunteers' lifestyles are changing, such as older adults seeking hobbies that keep them occupied and socially active. Uh, during the pandemic, we heard uh, from from uh, you know various uh, older adults that uh, during the pandemic they picked up certain recreational hobbies that kept them active, and they continue to be uh, engaged in that hobby because they like it. Then, difficulty recruiting new volunteers could be that organizations may not be reaching the right audience with their volunteer recruitment effort. Um, then, have you fully realized the impact of family volunteering? which means engaging parents, grandparents, and children today will inculcate the value of volunteerism in the children who will be the adults in years to come. So you are actually, uh, you know, in embedding the value of volunteerism in children today so that when they grow into adults, they will look at volunteerism as a way of uh, community participation, making your recruitment efforts a little bit more easier. So you plant the seed today for tomorrow. Uh, then there has to be organizational introspection as well. Is the volunteer having a memorable experience because this um, impacts volunteer retention? You know, so that having a memorable experience, don't forget that they are also your brand ambassadors. And what I mean by that is they will share the good work that you do in the community beyond their volunteer term. And they may also refer others to come and join in as a volunteer with your organization, with your departments and divisions. So to come back to making this a strategic effort, um, I'm confident you will agree that volunteers build your capacity and they come with a wealth of expertise, experience, and fresh perspectives. My message to any party who is involving volunteers is to strategize and invest in volunteer management. Until 2020, for over a decade, I was with a volunteer center in uh, Miss, uh, in region of Peel, volunteer Mississauga, Brampton, and Calden. So before joining Volunteer Canada, in my role, I work very closely with the community service organizations and the volunteers, the party engaging volunteers and the volunteers themselves. Most often when I hear that an organization is struggling with volunteer retention, what I find as a root cause is the lack of an organization-wide effort in supporting volunteer engagement. Uh, volunteering is either a secondary topic, championed only by a single person, hardly represented at the strategic table, or all of the above. These are creating reten volunteer retention uh, challenges. So strategic volunteer engagement then is to plan, then have a plan declared and published, and identify how outreach and recruitment, recruitment are going to be handled, taking the current trends in volunteerism into consideration. Uh, to identify the volunteer's journey with the organization and their role, and to provide a safe and supportive experience for the volunteer. 
remember the volunteers memorable experience will build the credibility for your department or division and then uh, their emotional connection to uh, you know your effort and then to follow all the way through to recognizing the volunteer contributions and to develop the required policies and to measure what matters with your evaluations uh, the important thing to realize here is that retention is a result of an accumulation of volunteer engagement activities, volunteer experiences, and their interpretation of how well prepared you are to engage them. Uh, it, there are times where I hear when I ask what is volunteer retention to you from organizations, they come back with either a volunteer rec recognition activity or a single activity that they're doing to help retain a volunteer. Well, retention is how you engage with this entire volunteer engagement cycle. And volunteer recognition alone does not guarantee retention. Uh, think of it as a volunteer experience chain and the chain is as strong as its weakest link. Uh, you can have a brilliant strategy and an attractive outreach effort and a grand celebration. But for example, if the recruitment process is cumbersome, with outdated policies and technology, and or only the volunteer manager is championing the volunteers, the volunteers soon begin to question the value of giving their time to the organization instead of giving time to their family and friends or to another organization. This is also to say that investing in volunteer management is just as important as having a strategy. If possible, hire a qualified leader of volunteers, whether you uh, give them the title as a volunteer manager or a volunteer coordinator. At Volunteer Canada, we use the umbrella term as leader of volunteers. Or appoint a dedicated person to coordinate the department's or division-wide effort. It's, it's that idea of having a person dedicated and focused on the volunteer engagement function. Then follow through to supporting this person with professional development. Uh, this is also an important aspect that I have seen community organizations overlook, either because of lack of funding or, again, because there's no proper volunteer engagement strategy that prioritizes taking care of leaders of volunteers. The value of leader of volunteer is that they can champion not only the volunteers, but with the necessary support, champion the volunteer engagement strategy that will ultimately build capacity for mission delivery. In other words, taking a deeper look at, at each stage of this particular volunteer engagement cycle. So let's take a look at these stages of the cycle. Um, during the planning stage, consider the current trends in volunteerism and see if your role needs to be redesigned. Uh, like we mentioned before, the trends show a preference to remote, virtual, episodic, or micro-volunteering. Should you consider these preferences and redesign the role? Is there a long duration or long-term commitment role that can be broken down into parts where you can have more volunteers engage in multiple shifts, if that's a possibility? Uh, then once you have your plan during the engagement stage, this is when the outreach, recruitment, and role assignment happens. So going back to the planning stage, this is where we are talking about have that strategy. Take a look at the needs analysis of uh, your organization, the volunteer needs analysis for your uh, you know, department or division, and see how can the roles be redesigned. Create that strategy, uh, socialize it with your group, and gain buy-in from the different parties. Have a person championing it and support that person. And during the engagement phase, this is where you're doing your marketing and outreach for the recruitment of volunteers. I want to take a little bit more time over here in sort of identifying ways that you can engage uh, the, uh, the uh, community. Uh, sometimes you may be having various methods of volunteer recruitment, but if there is a possibility and if it's within the context of the work that you do, consider reaching out to post-secondary institutions, build relationships, because sometimes there are recreational uh, programs, they do have community engagement practicum placement requirements that the student needs to fulfill. So if they are going into uh, you know, community service, social service, or recreation type of activities, 
being engaged with uh, the work that you do sometimes might help them because the work that you do is with the community. <clears throat> then, have you considered engaging with the local businesses and giving them an opportunity to volunteer and have a taste of the work that you do so that they'll have more connection with your department or division and the work that you do? Uh, have you looked at reaching out to schools so that you can uh, in inspire the next generation to be connected with the work that you do? Uh, I know in Ontario, especially in region of Peel, the school boards allow uh, any social organization to come in during the lunchtime and have a desk and you know share information. So, have you considered this type of uh, you know engagement with the community? Do you have open houses uh, that engages the entire community to be uh, you know part of the work that you do? And during this time, do you share that you are also engaging volunteers? In other words, you're sharing the message that you are. You, you are allowing access for the community to be part of the work that you do. And in your message, is it storytelling in nature? Are you saying you need 10 volunteers for a particular role? Or are you sharing the impact a certain volunteer has made that had really pushed your mission uh, you know, for, significantly forward? So is it storytelling in nature? How are you sharing your message? Are you using the latest, uh, you know, social media platforms to create video, uh, you know, messages and share them out? So these are all about the community outreach. And during the recruitment, are you using technology? Now, um, one thing that I know is many organizations do use technology in the volunteer recruitment. But when you're selecting that volunteer recruitment uh, platform, are you using a platform that has a huge learning curve? that is so cumbersome and it puts off volunteers or is it intuitive enough for the volunteer making it easy for the volunteer to volunteer with you and also making it easy for the person leading the volunteer engagement function within your organization and when it comes to recruitment and selection do you have a plan like is there a process in place where you are uh, engaging the supervisors of those particular roles as well in the recruitment uh, process uh, you know, is there a supervisor meet and greet moments that you have allowed uh, in that particular process? Then you will see a theme in my message that volunteer retention is a collection of moments in a volunteer's journey with you, and every moment matters. Uh, the journey is at its most crucial stage when volunteers are serving in their roles. Uh, that takes us to the support stage. This is when volunteers usually move from being excited to work with you through to assessing their impact and deciding their continuation with the role of the organization. So in the support stage is about the organization providing a safe, secure and supportive environment for the volunteers. Uh, during this stage, relationship building matters the most. Uh, but I have to preface this, preface this by saying, you know, in the role of a leader of volunteers it's all about building relationships to mobilize the community towards the work that you do uh, so if i'm to elaborate uh, the orientation and training provided to the volunteer will does it help them start on the right note uh, supervisors uh, is there a meet and like i mentioned before is there a meet and greet moment and the ongoing relationship with the volunteer is also crucial uh, Check in on the volunteer, engage in conversation and keep lines of communication open so that it builds camaraderie with the, the staff team as well as the volunteer team. Uh, volunteers tend to see innovative solutions sometimes. So encouraging innovative ideas and assessing the potential of the idea with them shows that you care about their contributions. Uh, like I mentioned before, again, flexibility in shifts and schedules shows them that they are a valuable addition to the organization rather than saying, if you are unable to fit into the ship, you are unable to take on a role with, uh, with our department or division. So, uh, you know, flexibility shows that you care and that you still want them and you're making it, uh, making everything possible for them to be engaged with you. Then highlighting the impact of their contribution shows them that you pay attention. Uh, it's a morale boost for the volunteers. So all of these leadership qualities will gradually strengthen the volunteer uh, volunteers' emotional connection to a uh, to your organization.
I did state that recognition alone does not guarantee retention, yet ensuring recognition is imperative in the volunteer engagement strategy. Uh, when it comes to volunteer recognition, my recommendation is that to make it a 12 month plan rather than just a one time activity. Yes, you need those one time activities, especially when you're celebrating the work that they do, uh, maybe, uh, you know, um, praising them in public the moment that you know they make a very significant contribution but also i want to highlight some volunteers or some individuals may not like public praise so when you build those relationships with the volunteers you will know uh, you know um, how they like to be recognized so but what i'm saying over here is have a 12 month plan celebrate commemorate and nominate in other words, celebrate the work that they do uh, through your storytelling, commemorate certain days, National Volunteer Week, uh, National Volunteer Managers Day, and International Volunteers Day on the 5th of December. Nominate them to the, the local municipal or the provincial or national volunteer awards. And, uh, you know, bring your exemplary volunteers forward so that they have a, uh, a recognition beyond your organization and also support the leader of volunteers in co-developing a 12-month plan. The most important aspect to consider is how the volunteers prefer to be recognized and making sure that uh, you know, you're meeting their preferences. Finally, evaluate and to go to the you know, finish line of our presentation, to evaluate at each stage measure what matters the quality of service matters just as much as the number of clients reached and have a strategy review period volunteer trends change with the socio-economic trends have a clear periodic uh, review uh, period for your volunteer engagement strategy what i shared through this slide is by no means a volunteer management 101 uh, each stage has its own learning curve however i encourage you to use the information you receive today and start conversations to bring volunteer engagement to the strategic table. And in conclusion, to summarize um, what I mentioned today, the practical steps is to have a strategic focus, uh, refine and adapt the volunteer engagement strategy, have a data-driven engagement approach, support your leader of volunteers to make data-informed and evidence-based decision-making in their volunteer engagement, I will share a tool with you before I go. Uh, foster collective impact, partner, collaborate, and share with other community organizations. Uh, connect with the volunteer center. They can help you with the volunteer recruitment. Uh, invest in volunteer management. Provide professional development and proper tools to the leader of volunteers. Uh, design meaningful volunteer experiences. Uh, take the current trends, review, and redesign so that the volunteer has a memorable experience. Uh, connect with expertise like Volunteer Canada and your local volunteer center. Uh, there is a reference uh, uh, slide in this presentation. I will share the presentation with Laura and you will find uh, a link to the volunteer center directory available in Volunteer Canada. And leverage technology. It does not always mean an expensive investment. It is taking care of making sure that the learning curve is minimal and the tool really supports you rather than you having to support the tool. Um, I mentioned that for data-driven engagement, I will share a tool with you, givingandvolunteering.ca. We have multiple data insights in this tool. Uh, this is just a screenshot available to you. Uh, you have various data points and data sets that the, your leader of volunteers can really understand the trends in volunteerism at the time. And we keep updating this with data points. Uh, and there are also uh, resources such as infographics. If you if uh, you or a member of your organization wants to build a case for volunteer management, and uh, you know you can use this as supplementary uh, material. Uh, I mentioned about volunteer recognition and you know, uh, commemor uh, commemorative days. The very first one coming up is National Volunteer Week, April 14th to the 20th. The theme and the hashtag is Every Moment Matters. This is spearheaded by Volunteer Canada. 
so please join in and uh, celebrate your volunteers. Share a message as to what impact they have made for your uh, department or division and use that as another membership or a volunteer recruitment tool. And you can find more information about this campaign and the campaign kit on volunteer.ca. So here's the resources page, and uh, I will again leave this slide with uh, Laura uh, so she can share with you. Uh, with that, um, this is my time. Thank you very much for Firefighting Canada for bringing me in front of you and sharing the message of uh, volunteer engagement, the trends in volunteerism, volunteer engagement, and volunteer retention. And again, this is a very concise version of a volunteer management 101 but I'm happy to take this uh, conversation to, an, to the next level if you provide us the opportunity to do so. So with that, Laura, I hand it back over to you and I think I need to stop sharing my screen. All right. Um, so uh, if you want to put questions into the Q&A, I said the chat earlier, but it's actually the Q&A that is set up and I see everyone has put in some of their great ideas in here for how they're recruiting. So I can go through some of those. Let me see if there's any questions coming in. Um, I see lots of lots of use of social media to raise awareness. Um, it's a local word of mouth. Um, retention with honor honorariums and small tokens of appreciation. Recruiting volunteers from our community overall, providing good PPE and training and supporting a culture of safety. Definitely pretty key there. Uh, retention enhanced by increasing leadership training, building soft skills for officers so members stay longer. Word of mouth and using existing members to bring bring a friend formal programs, um, saying, saying so it's been less successful with that. Um, family activities in the fire protection area, recruiting volunteer firefighters from volunteer areas using radio ads, banners, open houses, lots of open houses and looking at the different social media platforms and demographics with, you know, 40 plus kind of being on Facebook and, and some of the younger 16 to 40 being on Instagram and, uh, and whatnot. And we have another one, an annual recognition event, recognize years of service and special recognition. Lots of great ideas in here. Shaminda thoughts on any of those? Yeah, I see, uh, like, like I see the same messages there, Laura. So, Great ideas, and I think all of this work, the best way to look at it is to apply a marketing and advertising lens. And I very recently I read that, you know, for a person to really receive an information, process it, and then take action towards it, there has to be at least seven exposure, seven points of exposure for the same message. So take that into consideration. So you don't need to share the same message seven times over and over again, but you can use these different methods, but plan it out so that there is a drip campaign that really shares the message about the impact volunteers make with your uh, departments and divisions, and then using that to share the message of we recruit volunteers too. Um, and also, Laura, I don't know whether this exists, but maybe, maybe have a list of all of these efforts in um, approaches in one place so that you know each uh, department can take a look at that and see aha i can you know use this particular tactic or this particular approach but to share that collective list as to what you can do or what you have done in uh, you know recruiting volunteers yeah that's a great idea to generate um, so we have a question that's come in here. So within and for context for you, Shimina, so in, in Ontario, we have mandatory certification has come in for firefighters. So that's a mandatory level of training and that applies to career volunteer. So what is your thoughts um, about that requirement for a volunteer and what kind of impact that might have? So what sorry, what is that uh, certification again? Like so what it would it? be a tra training to a certain level, which they all have training requirements anyway, but it's sort of it's putting a mandatory certification onto what you would need to be trained to do essentially to be a firefighter, but it's it's uh it's like you can volunteer, but you need this mandatory certification for training as well. So I guess it's an additional layer of something required of the volunteer. 
I, I think it is a positive thing, uh, Laura. But it, my question is, when does this happen? Like, do you recruit with the certification or do you recruit and then help them through that certification? And if it is the latter, then how do you uh, pace it out? You know, is there a period where during the, let's call it the induction and the recruitment pe uh, period uh, that you are providing these particular skill requirements and qualification requirements before they are ultimately engaged in the role? Because that, I mean, to the volunteer, it's a positive thing. I mean, they are getting something that, like if you're looking at a new immigrant who's volunteering with you, or even a youth just coming out of post-secondary education, that's a qualification or a certification under their belt that they can use in terms of their career, uh, you know, progression. So it's a good thing to have. Will it put off individuals? I don't think so. But how you plan that out is what will make or break their continuation with you. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's it's um so it's a false because it is a significant amount of time for the training. That's sort of the concern coming coming from the volunteers on there. Um, so we have another question: Should we be worried about the future of volunteering in Canada? Will the number of people needed be there when we need them, or will we see more negative effects like the folding of service clubs that are taking place today? It's a tough question to answer, and the reason is we keep talking about the decline in numbers but i think it's not when you and i think i mentioned this at one point of the presentation too when we're talking about decline in numbers it's not that there are no volunteers out there the pathways to volunteerism is uh, are challenged uh, many times working with the volunteer center before i know many times not-for-profit organizations when they seek our membership They've existed for almost 15 years and they say, hey, we never heard about your volunteer center because volunteer centers are the hub that a volunteer can come and search for volunteer opportunities and the support organization for not-for-profit organizations or even you know services like as, uh, yours to uh, share the volunteer roles out to the larger community. What volunteer centers do is they break that mindset of volunteering is only in a food bank, a shelter, or a soup kitchen, or a park cleaner. They share the message that there are other ways that you can participate in your community with other organizations. So that is why our national action strategy is focusing more on really rallying the entire uh, country together, all stakeholders into a uniformed approach and a collaborative approach in sharing the value of volunteerism and uh, you know increasing the volunteer participation so should we be worried as it is now yes the numbers are declining but i don't think we should worry because provided that we all contribute towards the national action strategy and so you know this says i would be interested to hear your thoughts on developing a junior firefighter but a program for people under 18 so re reaching them in an effort to gain traction on developing interest for members to continue on and join once they reach the age of 18. I think that's a great idea uh, because you are making an impression in those young minds about firefighting. It's the same way as many other uh, careers would sort of engage with the younger audience in giving a taste of, you know, what that career is and then, uh, you know, hoping that they will continue or they will be inspired to be part of that career. Uh, in Ontario, I know we have the uh, the high skills major program. Uh, different schools are taking different, uh, you know, trades into consideration, like the hospitality industry, uh, the uh, sports and recreation industry. And then students can apply to be part of that niche track. Uh, I think it's the same approach here. Thank you. All right, looks like that's the end of the questions uh, or cer certainly other notes. I mean, volunteer fire departments have challenges due to time commitments with training and call volumes that are happening. Absolutely. Um, and certainly the training, training across the country, you know, going a little bit differently. BC having mandatory certification training with the playbook and Nova Scotia to comment about that in their county, they, it takes about 12 months for them to do the basic firefighter training. So there's that uh, sort of extra, extra level there. of time commitment. 
can I interject over there, Laura? Yeah. I think this is where investment in volunteer management is crucial or having that dedicated individual to take care of the volunteer engagement function within the organization. You can hire a qualified volunteer manager and provide them the certifications that uh, you know uh, your group will need and then engage them in uh, you know taking care of volunteer engagement uh, or it can be an individual who wants to sort of move out from the front line and mm -hmm. then may want to you know have uh, light duties or whatever uh, you can engage such a person and dedicate that person to sort of taking care of volunteer engagement so that it's not buying into the the entire staff pool but one person taking care of it and championing it yeah Good idea. All right. Um, we have time for, we'll do one more question here and then we'll wrap. Uh, what can communities do to attract volunteers to their respective towns when housing costs are a big factor to draw volunteers in? Good question. Let me think of this answer. What can communities attract volunteers to their respective towns? Uh, I'm just looking for clarity over here and let's make an assumption. Uh, you are looking at encouraging others to be part of this town. Did I understand that right, Laura? Yeah. So when they're you're trying, you want. I mean, people moving in, population is yeah. growing. I guess stuff and housing costs are are a big factor. I guess for for drawing people in. I think it's a matter of having those engagement opportunities, in other words, participation opportunities with the community. <clears throat> I mean, if you look at how um, people move inside a particular country and they move towards where there are more job opportunities, right? So like that, uh, you know, if you have uh, other ways of participating in the community, and also looking at the uh, how the community itself is taking care of the volunteers. One example I can give you is in the region of Peel, we, uh, we started a project called Pride in Volunteering because we found that from the region of Peel, the 2S LGBTQ community who has uh, all the wealth of knowledge and expertise and skill to give to Peel itself, when I mean Peel, Mississauga, Brampton and Calden, but they keep moving towards Toronto and even relocating to Toronto because Toronto have those support services and more to us LGBTQ uh, fr communities friendly in Peel where it was not. So the nuances were not taken care of. So it was an identified issue. And what we did was as a volunteer center, we partnered with the local uh, advocacy organization and we brought in pride in volunteering uh, talking about the physical space, the interaction with people and the policies. So it's about creating those engagement opportunities to participate in the community. And you play to the strengths of your community. Makes sense. All right, Shaminda, thank you so much for your time and for the insightful presentation. That wraps up our first session.